if you control the weather, you control everything. You can control every food supply and literally every political system. So what is geoengineering? Well, it's simply the manipulation of our weather by foreign agents. Geoengineering is now defined as large-scale manipulation of the planetary environment. This is to counteract man-made climate change. This is what the Royal Society published. This is what they put out. So this is their definition, their term of geoengineering. We have this issue, which we all have to address and is of major importance to all of us, to know that people are modifying our weather. Thus, we have to look at the facts that can be proven about what's going on in the atmosphere, about what's happening, about water vapor and its impacts, about the climate and the weather modification programs that are ongoing, these are real. The public has, relatively speaking, been kept in the dark about geoengineering schemes, plans, global geoengineering governance, and the fact that right now, under research, Anyone in the world can start conducting these experiments. So we have people artificially modifying our weather in the western states. California, Pacific Gas and Electric Company, or the city of Los Angeles. It's being modified by the Texas Weather Modification Board in Texas, Colorado, Idaho, Wyoming. Lots of other states are all modifying our weather and changing our climate with extreme implications. We believe many of them are told that what they're doing is very good for the planet, perhaps saving the planet through this climate remediation. Do these operations exist? Absolutely. Just look at the USGCRP or the United States Global Change Research Program. Congress has approved it. It goes up to the presidential supplemental budget. Uh, it is absolutely known that they are funding these geoengineering operations. Our nation and many other advanced nations have been manipulating the weather for some time now. Through government white papers and even IPCC United Nations documents, we know that geoengineering is occurring. The IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change, has been meeting for various years on this subject. They have produced reports uh, dating back from 1999 on aviation impacts on the global atmosphere from water vapor and other issues, um, depleting beneficial atmospheric ozone and other problems. A group of geoengineers, a clique, essentially a small clique, has decided that the answer to our global warming problems are to release particles and chemicals into the atmosphere. David Keith, Ken Caldera, and a small group of these men affiliated with various universities have promoted this for a long time. One of the things that the geoengineering promoters, this clique, has been doing is that they have been able to keep any voices that would be in opposition to them or want to know about the impacts off the record. In other words, that they have become the experts to go to and that the public and other people have no say. They go to meetings, they go to U.S. congressional hearings, which were held on geoengineering in 2009 and 2010, three of them by the U.S. House Science and Technology Committee. They also went to hearings of the UK Parliament during the same period of time to talk about global geoengineering governance and why these experiments should go forward. One of the people promoting geoengineering is Gregory Benford. One of his papers about doing experiments in the Arctic was that they could conduct these experiments, geoengineering experiments in the Arctic, the people there could live within the experiment. And if any harm came to them, it was okay to sacrifice that, them in that area in order to conduct this research because the research was very important for them to do. The other thing he noted in an interview was that you could very easily take a little bit of aluminum and a little bit of barium and you could uh, produce these clouds and have impacts very easily in, t in the atmosphere. You've got to, in a sense, engineer all these so you get the right kind of clouds for the effects we want. It is called geoengineering, fighting global warming by putting a chemical dust in the atmosphere and reflecting harmful radiation back into space. You could use barium oxide, for example, uh, which makes 
big fluffy clouds. But you could use tiny little bits of aluminum, which is benign in the environment, and essentially manage the climate. I was concerned about this attitude that it was okay to do this research and that we, all of us around the world, should be willing to live in their research experiment. And this is unacceptable. Geoengineer David Keith made uh, a statement a couple of years ago. He said, geoengineering gives man godlike power. Now, I've never chased godlike power. Uh, probably very few of the listeners, unless they're uh, the elite who are checking this film out, uh, have probably have not chased godlike power. But it must be one hell of a rush. And I think what most of us can relate to is maybe a relative or a friend who became addicted to a drug. And in that drug addiction, they have put their health and their family members' health at risk in order to get the rush of that drug. What we're finding in rain tests now uh, around the world is what people are calling the chemtrail geoengineering footprint of aluminum, barium, and strontium. These metals match a number of geoengineering patents that were uh, actually designed to specifically spray these metals out of airplanes uh, into the sky for the state of gold cooling the planet. They match what geoengineers deny they're spraying but state that they want to start spraying. If we take ground-based tests, for example, it does not prove the source of the pollution that we're finding in our soils, our air, and our water. It only tells us that something is happening which is not good, that aluminum is increasing, that barium is increasing in soil tests, water tests, and that associated problems are there. There is a belief or an opinion that the jets that leave these persistent jet contrails are spraying something into the atmosphere that would impact our health or cause other types of problems. I noticed when I started doing research in 2002 was that the trees in Mendocino County, Lake County, and other areas of Northern California were in extreme decline. It wasn't uh, from anything we could ascertain because it was whole suites of tree species. That means redwood trees, that means oak trees, that means manzanita, that means Douglas fir. You can see how bad the health of the trees are here because, see, they don't have people in here because they're afraid these trees are going to fall on somebody. This isn't a construction area. What, what are they constructing? I don't see anything they're constructing. But you can see that every other one in this, this area, when you look up toward the top, it has so much dieback and death on it. Every tree in this area is dying or in some sort of decline. You can see Right in here, this is the sign of aging and these curled up branches right here. This is all sign of, of that this tree wasn't in good health. It's, it's doomed to come down at some point. But you can see the dead branches internally all along here. Every one of these trees